VMF to OBJ is a tool for converting source engine map files to generic object files. The program extracts and decompiles the assets directly from a game's installation using VTF Lib and Crowbar, meaning as long as you own the game you can convert a map from it. It supports the conversion of brushes including regular and irregular geometry, materials including transparent textures and bump maps, displacements, brush entities, and prop entities including normals and materials. The program can be run on any VMF file, and has been tested to work on maps from Alien Swarm, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Counter-Strike Source, Day of Defeat, Gary's Mod, Half-Life Source, Half-Life 2 and its episodes, Left 4 Dead 2 Portal Portal 2 and Team Fortress 2 The program is still in development however and as such does not support everything Hammer does and still contains a few issues. Check the description or GitHub link for updates on these but as of the making of this video, VMF to OBJ does not support prop skins, displacement blend materials, info decals, and info overlays. There are also currently a few issues regarding the orientation of displacements, but most of the problems seem to come with converting decompiled maps rather than converting maps from the source. For example, this is the converted result of the raw VMF of CP Badlands from TF2 provided with the source tools, and this is the converted result of the ship map decompiled with BSP source. Thankfully, these issues can easily be tweaked manually. Using VMF to OBJ is pretty straightforward. Here I just have a simple VMF map, and if I open that up in Hammer, you can see it's the same demo file from before, where there's a couple of different kinds of brushes, including a displacement, a prop, and a custom texture to convert. Right next to the map, I've got a content folder with all of the custom assets, like the materials or models, and all the stuff that is used in the map that isn't included in the game by default. So I can just go over to the application and then run it through the command line and it'll tell me all the things that I need to run it. So I need to get the VMF file which is just in the same directory, the demo.vmf, the output which I'm just going to put in the same directory and just call it output, and then the VPK path, which you can get by going to your game directory, wherever you have the paco one underscore dir vpk copy that, and then just paste it in. In this case, you need a quotation mark because there's a space in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and just make sure you point it directly at the file. So in some of the other games, uh, there might be multiple files. So for example, some games use a a pack dir for materials and then another one for the models or anything like that. In that case all you would need is to uh, put a semicolon at the end, so put a semicolon here and then have the second path there, but in the case of Counter-Strike that's not necessary. Um, next because we have custom content we're going to use the external paths uh, parameter and then for me it's just going to be the content folder like this and then uh, I'm also going to put in dash T so that any tool brushes like no draw or clip brushes or skybox, skybox brushes are not going to be included in the conversion. So first it's going to read through all of the VPK files, getting all of the materials and models indexed and ready to go. Then it's going to read all of the custom content before finally going on to read the VMF file. It's going to read all the geometry and then start converting the brushes and then all of the entities like the props. And then once that is done, everything will be put into wherever you had the output to be. So here is the uh, object file, the materials file, and then a folder containing all of the converted materials. And then I can open this up in something like Blender. And take a look at the converted result. So I'm going to delete everything here and then just say import an obj file. I can go to the desktop, find the object, and then let that import. And once you have your object file imported, you can clear the rotation with alt r to make everything face right side up. And then since everything is absolutely massive, I'm going to scale it all down. 
and all that is left is the converted geometry and materials. So as you can see, because we had the tools option enabled, the sky box isn't there and any brushes that had no draw or other tools wouldn't show up either. And all that we are left with is the converted materials, including the displacement here, uh, the custom material, and then any objects. And for anything that has normal maps or anything like that, you can come in here and switch to the shader editor to see the converted texture, as well as the normal map that was already included. Depending on where you're importing the converted object into, you might run into a different problem. I know this exists in Blender, but I'm not too sure about other programs. If you are importing your object into Blender and when you're rendering it, for some reason everything looks super dark, the reason for this is because of something called the custom normals data. This is something that is used inside of the source engine, but uh, trips Blender up a little bit because it's using different normal data than what is usually included in the object. So to get rid of this problem, you would go through each of these objects and then click clear custom split normal data. However, because there could be thousands upon thousands of objects, that's unfeasible. So I have a little script that you can run in Blender uh, by selecting all of their objects, opening up a new tab off to the side, going to the text editor, creating a new script, pasting in the script, which there's a description, and then clicking run script. This might take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on how many objects there are in the scene. But once it's done, you should see that all of the normal issues have been resolved. And now that it's done, everything looks brighter already. And if we switch over to rendered view, things start to look more like they should. You can download the application in the link in the description below, as well as see if any of the issues brought up in this video have been resolved, or take a peek at the source code if you'd like. Thanks for watching.